Hi. So in this video, we're gonna talk about uh, some uh, antibodies associated with some autoimmune disorders. So the ones that we're gonna talk about are only these conditions that are given in the table table here. And uh, let's not talk about the clinical features because that'll be done in the later on in the videos later on. So the first uh, disease we're gonna talk about is SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus. So this is where you have all those malar rash and all of that. So uh, the two antibodies that we need to remember for this are anti-DSDNA antibodies, which is double-stranded DNA and ANA, anti-nuclear antibody. So the first test that we uh, need to do is ANA. That is the most initial test because this is a very sensitive test. So what sensitive means is when the patient doesn't have any antibodies towards ANA, that means the patient does not have the disease. All right. An anti-DSDNA, that is anti-double-stranded DNA, is a very specific uh, antibody seen in this condition. So here, uh, the second test that we'll do is DSDNA. This is to confirm whether the patient has SLE or not. There is another antibody called anti-Smith, which will also be done for SLE. And the next one we're going to talk about is drug-induced lupus. So for drug-induced lupus, that uh, what it means is, uh, lupus caused due to some kind of drugs as side effects or something like that you can remember. So the drugs you can remember with a mnemonic SHIP. So SHIP means S for sulfonamide, H for idralazine, isoniazid I and proconamide for P. So these are the four drugs that we need to remember which cause drug induced lupus. So uh, the antibodies seen in this condition are antihistone antibodies. So you can remember it as his drugs causing lupus. So his drugs, his for antihistone and drugs for drug induced lupus. So the drugs are these four. So you can remember it like this. The next very important condition is scleroderma in which uh, we have two types. One is diffuse and the second one is limited. So in diffuse scleroderma, it means your uh, this, the disease is present all over your body, like in different parts of your body, say 70, 70 different uh, areas in your body. Right. So you can remember diffuse scleroderma with SCL is for scleroderma and diffuse as in 70 different areas in your body. And the second one is limited scleroderma, which is also called crest syndrome. So uh, what crest syndrome means is the clinical features and we'll talk about it in, another, in the next videos. So you can remember crest with C and anticentromere with another C. So anticentromere antibodies will be seen in crest syndrome. The next one is polymyositis, which is poly, that means multiple myositis, uh, muscles, multiple muscles, especially the proximal muscles are affected, uh, causing inflammation and other symptoms. So the, uh, so the antibodies seen here are anti-PO1. So you can remember PO-JO, okay. Or uh, for some Indians uh, who are very familiar with the name Pooja, you can remember it with this name as well, PO uh, for polymyositis and JA for anti jo one or po -JO. Right, so in Sjogren syndrome, Sjogren syndrome is where uh, the patient has dry eyes, dry mouth and all of that. So you can remember the antibodies associated with it with dry eyes. So again, this is for Indians. So uh, dry eyes means uh, a patient cannot cry, right? So can't cry means rola, rolana. So uh, you will have the uh, antibodies ro and la, rulana in Hindi means uh, a patient can cry or I mean it make, it, it means uh, making somebody cry. So you can remember with dry eyes, cry, rola and rulana, alright. And the next one is PBC that is uh, primary biliary cirrhosis. Uh, so again this is a gall, this is an infection, uh, this is an autoimmune disease that affects your gallbladder. So you can remember with B, C and anti-mitochondrial with B, C, this may not be a very decent treatment, but this is a very good way to remember uh, for many Indians. Okay, this, uh, I think many Indians know what B, C and M, C mean. It is not a decent word, please know it, but you can remember it like this, B, C, M, C. And then the next one is autoimmune hepatitis, which where your liver is affected. Your gallbladder is affected in the in PBC and your liver is affected in autoimmune hepatitis. 
so in autoimmune hepatitis your antibodies are anti smooth muscle antibodies so uh, here you can remember h dash s like you know the first and the last letters of the you know organ and here and for smooth we can remember s dash s dash h uh, smooth s first letter and h last letter so h s s h okay so hepatitis has smooth antibodies all right and the next one are these two vasculitis syndromes. Uh, so here we have Churgstrauss and Wegner's. So these two antibodies are very important and very confusing. It can get very confusing. So you must remember uh, Churgstrauss Strauss as a person. He, uh, it's the name of uh, a person. He had some Pepsi. And then uh, it led to many allergies or you know things like that. Because in Churgstrauss, in the Churgstrauss syndrome, so in Strauss syndrome, this patient, this guy called Strauss had some Pepsi using some straws. You can remember it like that also. Straws are those, you know, those things that we drink with, right? Sorry about the title anyway. Uh, using some straws and he had, he had some, he had got some allergies, uh, which allergies are always associated with asthma, IgE elevated and eosinophilia. Right? So uh, Pepsi for P, so P anchor, Chirk straws. Straws is this guy who had some Pepsi with straws and in immediately he got some allergies associated with asthma, IG and uh, eosinophilia. So these are the clinical features of Chirk straws and the antibodies associated are P and K. And the next one is Wegner's granulomatosis. So Wegner's you can just uh, replace it with W E C. So just re replace G with C and everything is you know associated with C. So, uh, first of all, C for C anchor, and then, you know, nasal crusting we have in uh, Wegner's, uh, you know, granulomatosis, and we have other symptoms also like sinusitis. So, C equals to S, right? Not really, but yeah. So, C, S, sinusitis, and many more, you know, clinical features with C. So, we'll talk about those later on. Right now, let's just uh, remember C anchor for Wegner. So, VG is equal to C, all right? And the next one is celiac disease, which is a very important, uh, you know, disease disorder. And uh, there are three antibodies specifically associated with celiac disease. So the first one is anti-tissue anti uh, transglutaminase, then gliadin, then anti-endomycial antibody. So endomycial antibody, you can remember it as EMA. So there is no particular mnemonic for this, but uh, one thing, I mean, this is how I remember it. Celiac, celiac is for call or GL because that is also call and then uh, TTG, MR. So uh, just call TTG and MR. This is how I remember it. Just very vague but this is how you, I remember it if it helps. Uh, yeah and then next is Graves disease. So Graves disease is nothing but hyperthyroidism. So T3, T4 elevated and all of that because there is uh, there are antibodies against TSH. Okay, this is pretty clear. Hyperthyroidism, Graves is thyroidism for TSH antibodies. Next is rheumatoid arthritis. Again, this is also a very important one and a very easy one to remember. So uh, the first one, uh, like we saw for SLE, actually we had the first test was ANA and the second one was DNA, right? Yes, DNA. So similarly here, the first test that is the most sensitive and the most initial test we do is rheumatoid factor, rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid factor and the second one we do is anti-CCT. So uh, this is the most specific or the most confirmatory test. So you, you do CCT to see to confirm if the patient really has rheumatoid arthritis and rheumatoid factor if it is negative that means the patient does not have rheumatoid arthritis. So uh, for CCT. There's no really, there's not really a mnemonic or anything, but you just have to remember it as uh, rheumatoid arthritis and CCP. There's no other relation with uh, each other. So as a quick revision, SLE, the, the first most test you do is ANA and then anti-DS DNA, ANA, DNA, right? Uh, specific is DNA and sensitive is ANA. Drug induced lupus, his drugs causing lupus, so the, his drugs are, you can remember with the name ship, with the mnemonic ship, diffuse scleroderma, so diffuse in 70 uh, areas in your body and scleroderma C, S, C, L, limited or crest syndrome, C for anti-centromere C, polymyositis, Joe, Pojo or Puja, 
uh, Sjogren's when a patient cannot, uh, patient wants to cry, uh, Rolana, R-O-L-A, primary biliary cirrhosis, B-C-M-C, autoimmune hepatitis, H-S, and this is smooth, S-H, right? And then Chirk Straws is P. Anka, this Chirk Straws guy uh, had some Pepsi with straws and all of that happened. So Pepsi for P. Anka and Chirk Straws. Wegner's just replaced G with C, C. Anka. Celiac disease is TTG, Emma and Call. Call is for celiac disease, TTG is for tissue transglutaminase which is done first usually. And then Emma is for anti-endomycial antibodies and GL for gliadin. Graves is thyroid, hyperthyroidism, so TSH antibodies. Rheumatoid arthritis, the first one is rheumatoid factor and the second one is anti-CCP. So that is all about the uh, antibodies associated with different autoimmune conditions. So I'll see you in the next video. Happy studying guys. Bye bye.